Elon Musk hates Dragon's water landings. Why? Every splash means his Mars dream is failing. In 2019, Dragon exploded testing his secret fix, a landing system so dangerous NASA banned it. But Musk found something crazier. What if I told you Dragon might be retired soon for this insane solution? Will this risky gamble save or destroy SpaceX's future? Let's dive right in. Back in 2014, something was eating at Elon Musk. While the world celebrated Dragon's flawless ocean recoveries, Musk was secretly furious. Each splash represented a fundamental engineering dead end that could destroy his Mars colonization timeline forever. Here's what nobody understood. Mars doesn't have oceans. More critically, Mars has virtually no atmosphere, just 1% of Earth's density. Those beautiful parachutes that worked so perfectly on Earth? Completely worthless on Mars. Every water landing was proof that SpaceX was still trapped in 1960s Apollo technology, while the clock ticked toward planetary alignment windows that only open every 26 months. But Musk had a crazy solution brewing, one so dangerous that NASA would eventually ban it outright. In 2014, Musk ordered his engineers to attempt the impossible make a spacecraft land like a rocket. Not with parachutes, not in water, but hovering in midair using pure engine power before touching down on solid ground. They called it propulsive landing, and it required eight Super Draco engines, each pumping out 16,000 pounds of thrust. That's enough combined force to make a 14,000-pound capsule hover like a UFO. In 2016, they actually did it. At their McGregor facility, Dragon hovered five feet above Texas soil for several seconds, defying every assumption about spacecraft recovery. This wasn't just a tech demo. This was survival technology for Mars. Think about it. When you're screaming toward Mars at thousands of miles per hour, parachutes are basically tissue paper. The only way to land anything heavy on the red planet is rockets firing at the last second to slow you down. No exceptions, no alternatives. So when Musk watched Dragon splash into Earth's oceans, he wasn't seeing success. He was seeing proof that his current technology was useless for the mission that mattered most. This obsession spawned Red Dragon, a secret 2018 mission to land an unmanned dragon on Mars using pure rocket power. It would prove propulsive landing could work on another planet and open the door for human colonization. The timeline was insane. The technology was untested. But Musk was determined to beat the 2018 Mars launch window, a opportunity that wouldn't come again until 2020. Then reality struck like a meteor. NASA took one look at Musk's rocket-powered landing system and essentially said, you want our astronauts riding a controlled explosion to the ground? Absolutely not. Their concerns weren't paranoia. Dragon's heat shield had tiny gaps where landing legs would deploy. NASA engineers calculated that during re-entry at 17,000 miles per hour, these openings could become superheated weak points, potentially tearing the capsule apart with crew inside. The certification process alone would take years and hundreds of millions of dollars. But the real death blow came in 2017, when NASA pulled funding for the Mars sample return mission that would have used Red Dragon. Without that financial backing, the Mars dream got shelved. Musk was forced to focus on a more embarrassing problem. America couldn't even get its own astronauts to space. Despite the setbacks, SpaceX kept working on propulsive landing as a backup system. The plan seemed perfect. Try rocket landing first, deploy parachutes if anything went wrong. April 20th, 2019 shattered that illusion forever. During a routine ground test, Crew Dragon capsule C204 exploded in a spectacular fireball visible for miles. The blast was so violent it sent debris flying hundreds of feet and completely destroyed months of work in seconds. The cause? A faulty valve leaked highly toxic propellant that ignited catastrophically. In that moment, everyone realized rocket-powered landings weren't just technically challenging, they were potentially lethal for astronauts. For a program where crew safety is everything, that explosion was a death sentence for propulsive landing as a primary system. After C-204's destruction, SpaceX made the devastating decision to abandon propulsive landing for crew missions. Those eight Super Draco engines got demoted to emergency-only duty, 
Musk's revolutionary landing system became a backup to the backup, only to be used if all four main parachutes somehow failed during descent. Even then, it would splash into the ocean, not land gracefully on solid ground. This compromise has worked flawlessly since 2019. Dragon's parachute system has never failed. Dozens of astronauts have safely returned via ocean splashdown. Mission accomplished, right? Dead wrong. Because while SpaceX was perfecting parachute landings, Musk was secretly developing something that would make Dragon completely obsolete. In late 2024, Musk dropped a bombshell that shocked the space industry. He suggested Dragon, the capsule that brought American human spaceflight back from extinction, might be retired sooner than anyone expected. Dragon is awesome as a capsule architecture, Musk tweeted, but we need to move beyond that to rapidly reusable propulsive landers. He wasn't talking about improving Dragon. He was talking about replacing it entirely with Starship. But here's the mind-blowing part. This isn't just about better technology. This represents a complete philosophical revolution in how humans will travel through space. Dragon was designed for one mission, getting people to orbit and bringing them home safely. But Musk's vision requires something fundamentally different. A vehicle that can land on the moon, hop between planets, refuel itself, and be reused like a commercial airliner. Starship is that vehicle. It's not just bigger than Dragon. It's a completely different category of spacecraft. Instead of splashing into oceans, Starship lands vertically using massive Raptor engines. Instead of being recovered by boats, it can be refueled and launched again within hours. Instead of carrying four to seven astronauts, it can transport 100 plus people along with massive cargo loads. But here's what makes this absolutely insane. Starship uses the exact same propulsive landing technology that NASA banned for Dragon. Remember those Super Draco engines that exploded in 2019? Starship's Raptor 3 engines make them look like firecrackers. Each Raptor 3 produces 560,000 pounds of thrust, more than double a Super Draco. But here's the kicker. They're actually simpler and more reliable than the engines that failed on Dragon. How is that possible? SpaceX learned from Dragon's failures and completely reimagined rocket engine design. The original Raptor looked like a flying spaghetti monster, Musk's actual words, with cables and pipes everywhere. Raptor 3 looks like alien technology, sleek, integrated, with most components 3D printed as single pieces to eliminate failure points. Where Dragon had separate cooling systems and fire suppression equipment, Raptor 3 has cooling channels built directly into the engine structure. Where Dragon needed external heat shields, Raptor 3 generates less external heat and actively cools itself. It's the propulsive landing system Musk always wanted for Dragon, finally perfected for Starship. This shift couldn't come at a more critical time. NASA's Artemis 3 mission plans to land astronauts on the moon by 2027 using a lunar version of Starship. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin just finished applying spray-on foam insulation to their Blue Moon lander for an unmanned test flight this year. Both companies are betting everything on propulsive landing. No parachutes, no ocean recovery, just pure rocket power bringing spacecraft down exactly where they need to be. It's the technology Musk desperately wanted for Dragon in 2014, finally getting its moment a decade later. But here's what's really crazy. SpaceX has spent over 15 years and billions of dollars perfecting Dragon. They've mastered capsule design, heat shields, life support systems, and ocean recovery. Dragon has flown 47 successful missions without a single crew fatality. Are they really going to throw all that expertise away for an unproven Starship system? Or is there something bigger happening here? A master plan that uses Dragon's proven reliability as a stepping stone to something even more ambitious? Here's the timeline that makes everything click. Mars launch windows open every 26 months. The next optimal window is 2026, then 2028, then 2030. Dragon can't reach Mars. It's physically impossible. The capsule doesn't have enough fuel, life support, or landing capability for interplanetary travel. Starship can reach Mars, but it's still unproven for human flight. The first crewed Starship missions won't happen until at least 2026 20, to 2027. So here's Musk's dilemma. 
use the 2026 Mars window with unproven Starship technology, or wait until 2028 to 2030 when Starship is fully tested, but competitors might beat SpaceX to Mars. That's why Dragon's retirement timeline is so critical. SpaceX needs to transition from Dragon to Starship fast enough to catch the Mars windows, but safely enough to not kill anyone in the process. But there's one more twist that nobody saw coming. Recent Starship test flights revealed a fatal flaw that could derail everything. During Flight 7 in January 2025, the new Block 2 Starship exploded during ascent due to a propellant leak between the fuel tank and engine fire shield the same type of structural failure that destroyed the Dragon capsule in 2019. Musk admitted the solution requires adding fire suppression systems and better venting, exactly the kind of safety equipment that made Dragon too heavy and complex for Mars missions. So the question becomes, is Starship heading down the same path as Dragon, getting weighed down with safety systems that make Mars missions impossible? Or will SpaceX find a way to solve the propellant leak problem without adding the complexity that killed Dragon's Mars dreams. The answer will determine whether humans reach Mars in this decade, or whether we're still splashing into Earth's oceans while the red planet waits for us to figure it out. And there's one more secret about Starship's design that could change everything we thought we knew about the future of space travel. So here we are. Dragon's water landing success was actually its biggest failure. Proof that SpaceX was stuck using 60-year-old Apollo technology while Mars waited. Musk's crazy fix? Retire the capsule that saved American spaceflight and bet everything on an untested rocket that lands like a sci-fi movie. But here's what keeps me up at night. What if Starship hits the same engineering wall that killed Dragon's Mars dreams? What if the safety systems needed to keep humans alive make it too heavy for interplanetary travel? The 2026 Mars window is coming fast. SpaceX has maybe 18 months to prove Starship won't explode, like that Block 2 did in January. If they miss this window, we're waiting until 2028. And by then, China or someone else might be planting flags on Mars instead. This isn't just about rockets. This is about whether humanity becomes multiplanetary in our lifetime, or if we stay trapped on Earth watching Musk's Twitter updates about next time. What do you think? Is Dragon's retirement genius or madness? Will Starship actually make it to Mars? Or are we watching the most expensive failure in space history unfold in real time? Drop your thoughts below. And if this got your space nerd brain spinning, hit that subscribe button because we're just getting started with the craziest space stories you've never heard. The future of humanity might literally depend on it. Eleven minutes. That's how long SpaceX's $3 billion Starship lasted before exploding. Flight 8 spun out of control. Flight 9 disintegrated on re-entry. While Elon keeps saying these are successful failures, NASA scientists just revealed the real problem. And it's not engine failure or fuel leaks like everyone thinks. What if I told you the explosions are happening because SpaceX is making their rockets too light to survive? Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA scientists found that SpaceX doesn't want you to know. When they analyzed the wreckage from Flight 7, 8, and 9, they discovered something terrifying. The explosions weren't random failures. They were systematic breakdowns of rockets pushed beyond their physical limits. Let me tell you about the most advanced rocket engine ever built and why it's destroying itself. Each Raptor engine is like a controlled bomb. Inside, two separate turbo pumps spin at 30,000 RPM while liquid methane and oxygen burn at 600 bar of pressure. That's like cramming 8,700 pounds of force into every square inch. To put that in perspective, your car tire has about 30 PSI. This is 290 times more powerful. But here's where SpaceX made their fatal mistake. To make these engines lightweight enough to carry payload, they stripped away every safety margin. No backup systems, no redundant cooling, no extra structural support. The result? Engines that work perfectly until they don't. Flight 7 started perfectly. All 33 engines roared to life. The booster separated cleanly. Ship 33 was climbing towards space when something went wrong. 
At exactly 7 minutes and 38 seconds, the first center engine died. Then another. Then another. Within 30 seconds, five of six engines had failed, sending the $200 million ship tumbling toward Earth like a broken firework. But here's the shocking part. SpaceX knew this would happen. After the explosion, Elon Musk tried to blame a simple propellant leak. But NASA's analysis revealed the horrifying truth. The leak wasn't an accident. It was inevitable. SpaceX had removed the fire suppression system to save weight. They'd eliminated backup venting to reduce complexity. They'd stripped away the protective fire shield because Raptor 3 wouldn't need it. But Ship 33 was still using Raptor 2 engines. Without protection, fuel leaked into the gap between the tank dome and engine bay. Pressure built up like a ticking time bomb until the entire structure ruptured. It was like removing the safety valve from a pressure cooker and wondering why it exploded. When United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno first saw pictures of Raptor 3, he thought SpaceX was playing a joke. The engine looked stripped and unfinished. He couldn't believe it was real. Here's why he was shocked. Traditional rocket engines have hundreds of external components. Sensors, cables, cooling lines, backup systems. Raptor 3 has almost none of them visible. SpaceX claims they integrated everything inside. But industry experts whisper a different theory. They eliminated critical safety systems to hit weight targets that were physically impossible. Remember when SpaceX chose methane fuel because it was safer than other options? That decision is now haunting them. Methane burns clean, which sounds great, but it also burns incredibly hot. Hot enough to melt the exotic alloys SpaceX developed with code names like SX500. When these ultra-lightweight engines overheat, they don't just shut down gracefully, they catastrophically fail. Other companies use heavier engines with thicker walls and more cooling. SpaceX chose the opposite approach. Make them as light as possible and hope nothing goes wrong. Here's something SpaceX hoped no one would notice. To make Raptor 3 so lightweight, they had to use 3D printing for critical components. But 3D printed metal has microscopic weaknesses that traditional forging doesn't. Under the extreme pressures inside the